Hi everyone, um, this is Alam Sitar. Um, welcome all. I'm an endocrinologist with Catholic Health Services Long Island and today we're going to speak a little bit about thyroid gland. So um, it will include the general overview, function, common disorders, you know, um, just for public awareness. So what is a thyroid gland basically? Um, it is a small butterfly shaped gland. Um, it is located at the front of the neck under the skin. It's part of endocrine system and it produces thyroid hormones. It measures approximately 4 to 4.8, 1 to 1.8 by 0 0.8 to 1.6 centimeters. Um, it weighs about 10 to 20 grams, so it's not like a huge organ. Um, it has a right lobe, it has a left lobe, and it has a middle lobe, which connects the right and the left lobe, and it has been named isthmus. Uh, now remember, normal thyroid is not visible when you're looking at somebody's neck, front of the neck. Um, now, a little bit about the endocrine system. So what is endocrine system? It refers to several glands in the body. Now, a gland is an organ that produces hormones, and hormones are chemicals that coordinate and regulate different functions in the body. Um, there are many glands in the endocrine system, uh, including hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and pineal gland. Now, these three glands are located in the brain, in the skull. Then comes thyroid gland, which is located in the neck. Next to thyroid glands are parathyroid glands. We have adrenal glands. We have pancreas, ovaries in women, testes in men, and then we have placenta and pregnant women. Now let's talk a little bit about thyroid hormones. So the main function of thyroid gland is to make and secrete thyroid hormones. Now thyroid hormones are mainly uh, referred to thyroxine, which is T4, and triiodothyronine, which is T3. Um, there is very small difference between the two, um, structurally as well as, you know, uh, function-wise. So remember, T4 is solely released directly from the thyroid gland, while for T3, only 20% comes directly from the thyroid gland, and the rest is converted in other tissues of the body according to our needs. Um, thyroid gland needs iodine to make thyroid hormones. Now remember, both too little and too much iodine may affect the thyroid function. Um, the recommended daily allowance for iodine in adults is about 150 microgram daily. Uh, very important to remember, pregnant patients and breastfeeding women, they need to take more iodine about 250 to 290 microgram per day. Um, now a little bit about thyroid hormone function. So very important for normal functioning of the body is more like a generalized statement, but more specifically, it regulates your metabolism, how your body uses energy, how it utilizes energy. It regulates your heart rate, heart contractility, which is the pumping power of the heart, breathing, uh, gastrointestinal motility, which can you know, result in constipation and diarrhea. Body temperature, brain development, especially in infants. And that's very important in the first three months of pregnancy. Brain activity and everyone, older, younger, adults, women, men, skin maintenance, bone density, fertility, and mood as well. Now, thyroid, just like any, or any other organ, thyroid disease can happen. It is relatively common. It affects about 20 million people in the USA alone. It may include hypothyroidism, which means underactive thyroid, 
hyperthyroidism, so as the name suggests, it's overactive thyroid. Then there is thyroiditis, which means any infection or inflammation affecting the thyroid gland. Then there is a goiter, which is a term for an abnormally enlarged thyroid gland. There is, it's not very common, but there can be congenital absence of thyroid gland as well. Now let's talk a little bit about hypothyroidism. So it's a condition in which basically the thyroid gland doesn't produce enough thyroid hormones or no thyroid hormones at all. It is a common condition and affects about 2% of the population. Remember, it is five to eight times more common in women than men. It is divided to primary, which is the most common, and secondary hypothyroidism. So primary is when the problem is with the thyroid gland itself. Secondary is because pituitary gland plays a role in regulating all the other glands in the body. So secondary hypothyroidism is caused by any disease process of the pituitary gland. What are the common causes of primary hypothyroidism? The most common is Hashimoto's disease, which is simply autoimmune disease of the thyroid gland. Then patients who have their thyroid glands removed surgically for any reason. Um, patients who receive radioactive iodine for hyperthyroidism, which is one option for treating hyperthyroidism. Then there are patients who receive radiation therapy for thyroid cancer, which means radioactive iodine ablation. Then the certain cancer drugs, especially newer drugs, they can cause hypothyroidism. Um, also, there is congenital or by birth. So the thyroid gland may be present, but it may be very small, atrophic, it doesn't produce thyroid hormones. What are the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism? So they are nonspecific, but um, they include pretty much, they affect every organ system. You can have fatigue, cold intolerance, shortness of breath on exertion, constipation, dry skin, depression, abno ab abnormal menstruation, excuse me, coarse and dry hair, hair thinning and hair loss. Now remember, this is generalized hair thinning and hair loss. It's not gonna be a patchy hair loss. Brittle nails. Uh, these are the symptoms, most common symptoms that hypothyroidism can present with. Certain signs, slow movement, slow speech, slow heart rate, coarse skin, puffy facies, tongue enlargement, nipple discharge, and fluid buildup around heart and lungs or lungs. Remember, treatment of hypothyroidism is very simple. All patients, irrespective of the underlying cause of hypothyroidism, they need thyroid hormone replacement therapy. And remember, untreated, severe hypothyroidism can be potentially life-threatening. Now let's talk uh, a little bit about hyperthyroidism, which basically means overactive thyroid. So as the name represents, the thyroid gland produces and releases abnormally high amounts of thyroid hormones. It is five times more common in women than men. It affects up to 1.3% of the population in the United States. So it's slightly less common than hypothyroidism. Uh, what are the causes of hyperthyroidism? Again, autoimmune hyperthyroidism, which is called Graves' disease. Certain thyroid nodules, and we're gonna talk about thyroid nodules a little bit in the coming slides, but thyroid nodules, not all the thyroid nodules, but some thyroid nodules can cause hyperthyroidism. Then when someone has thyroiditis, which means acute inflammation of the thyroid gland, that can also cause hyperthyroidism. And then, Rarely, pituitary gland can have a tumor that may cause hyperthyroidism as well, in which case it is called secondary hyperthyroidism. What are the common signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism? So patients usually would experience any one of these or all of them. 
it means heat intolerance, excessive sweating, weight loss despite normal or increased appetite, tremor or shaking, palpitations, anxiety or restlessness, or sleep issues. Treatment of hyperthyroidism, um, we have few more options than as compared to hypothyroidism. So usually the first option is medications. Then there is radioactive iodine ablation as an option, especially for patients who don't want to take medications or who have a medical contraindication to take medications. And then there is surgical removal of the thyroid gland. Now, let's talk a little bit about goiter. So goiter, it refers to the abnormal growth of thyroid gland. So basically, thyroid gland is larger than its normal size. And it, the increase in size varies. It can be mild, moderate, or severe. Now, they can be diffuse or nodular. Remember, iodine deficiency is the most common cause of goiter worldwide. Now, in the United States, where iodine deficiency or significant iodine deficiency does not exist, so multinodular goiter or underlying autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Graves' disease, they are more common cause of goiter. Um, in older adults, multinodular goiter is more common. Um, it can be asymptomatic. It can be associated with decreased or increased thyroid hormone production. Or if it gets too big, then it can cause obstructive symptoms. So that means it can press on the trachea, which is the windpipe, which can cause trouble breathing or cough. It can cause difficulty swallowing when it presses on the esophagus, which is the food pipe. And then if it affects the vocal cords or presses on the vocal cords, that will cause hoarseness of voice. Now, coming to thyroid nodules. So thyroid nodules refers to a growth on the thyroid gland. It's basically part of the thyroid tissue itself. The way it organizes and the way it looks and it appears, we call, we describe them as nodules. And they happen inside the thyroid gland. Again, they are extremely common, and the prevalence of thyroid nodules increases with age. They are usually and commonly discovered incidentally on imaging, especially nowadays, or they can be felt on physical exam when they are larger or very superficial. Risk factors for thyroid nodules and goiter include smoking, obesity, or metabolic syndrome and alcohol consumption. The risk of thyroid cancer within a multinodular goiter or, or a single thyroid nodule is approximately 3 to 5 percent. Only selected thyroid nodules may need a fine needle aspiration biopsy, which is the only way to check if the nodule is cancerous or precancerous or if it's benign. Um, now, coming to thyroid cancer, so basically it happens when normal cells and the thyroid changes to abnormal cells and they grow out of normal control of the body. Again, it can be asymptomatic or it may produce symptoms due to the size or spread to surrounding tissues, which is not very common with thyroid cancer unless and until it's significantly delayed and it's aggressive cancer. Thyroid cancer would present as thyroid nodule, or in advanced cases, it may cause symptoms like difficulty breathing, cough, difficulty swallowing, or hoarseness of voice. As mentioned earlier, it's diagnosed through a needle biopsy of the thyroid nodule, which is a pretty non-invasive and safe procedure. There are four different types of thyroid cancer. The most common form, fortunately, is papillary thyroid cancer, which 90% of the time, or we can say most of the time, has a very good prognosis after treatment. Now, treatment primarily involves surgery, which means removing part of the gland or the whole thyroid gland. Uh, 
Now remember, patients will need to take thyroid hormone for lifelong after their thyroid has been removed. For patients who have only half thyroid removed, 50% of them may need to take thyroid hormone supplement down the road. And then some patients, based on the characteristics of cancer, the type of cancer, some patients may need to undergo radioactive iodine ablation, which is primarily to decrease the chances of recurrence for the cancer. So this was uh, a little bit about uh, the thyroid gland, the common problems, um, and I thank you very much for your time and listening. Um, for more information, you could visit goodsamaritanuniversity.org. And you also can make appointment with Good Samaritan Hospital University Endocrinology Division. The office is located in West Babylon, and uh, we provide care at Good Samaritan University Hospital as well. Once again, thank you very much. Stay blessed. Stay well. Thank you.